Thanks for tuning in to the World XP Podcast. If you're enjoying the content, please drop us up, drop a like, and let us know your thoughts below in the comments. Also, please consider supporting our podcast via the link below. It really helps us out. Lucas, welcome to the World XP Podcast, bro. It's a pleasure to have you. We've been trying to do this for forever, but we both busy as hell. Welcome, dude. Thank you, man. Yeah, I know. We schedule it, man. Finally, it's good to be on here. I know. It's uh, it's almost like we just had training all the time instead of <laughs> instead, instead of talking of, instead of talking so obviously you and i know all the stuff about the background of the club and and stuff and i know you've done some various interviews and podcasts before so if people want to go listen to those and kind of the basic like interview questions that people ask like feel free to go hit those up but i want to start with something that i don't actually know and that's what made you start the club in the way that you did? Because we were chatting two summers ago. We were trying to put extra teams in the league and we were trying to run teams our way and we played for various teams together. And it's kind of been like, yeah, like quality has been good, but there's always been stuff that we're like, oh, we could do this better. We could do that better. Um, and at the time that you started it, I was wedding planning. So I was not, I was not involved in any team that I was on really with the, behind the scenes and all the rest of the stuff. But I knew that you wanted to start one. But then when it came out in the way that it did, um I don't I don't want to say I was surprised because I don't I don't think surprise is the right is the right word. But I was let's see, well I don't know what the, I don't know what the right word I'm looking for is. I know it's difficult to run a team. Um and not only did you do that, but you've gone above and beyond in less than a year. In MPSL, team is unbeaten. Not only that, but the marketing and all the the push behind the club. It's hard to get people to buy into something with no track. Record. Yeah, I mean, um, I think the original, like at the beginning, we just trying to was trying to do things the right way in terms of um, the way we treated our players and trying to go above and beyond and make it um, kind of as professional as possible. Um, in terms of that aspect. And then in terms of the other aspect, in terms of making it unique and different and trying to really push something different and making, you know, art and fashion the forefront of the club and trying to take a, a different approach to, to the aesthetics and the way things look. I think um, that match with, with um, the way we try to do things for the players and then obviously, you know, getting uh, high level players and, and kind of combining all that kind of made it, made it successful and then as you touched on the mpsl thing i mean obviously when you you're able to you know get a franchise in, in mpsl it kind of legitimizes everything kind of past just what anybody every day can kind of put it together you know yeah that's the reason i ask that is because with no track record right at that point there have been no one season if that you probably started talking to them before that season was even over um and the well I want to say well first first meshing all those three things makes sense the way that the club has manifested itself and I look at you and Keith I'm like that makes total sense because you guys are both creatives you guys are both artsy you guys are doing stuff with fashion right your profile picture for the longest time I don't know if it still is but it was usually going like this like showing like the hand tattoos <laughs> and like all the stuff that right I I wouldn't do and it's not because it's bad it's just because that's not who I am. So when I looked at how the club has manifested itself with uh was it Nick the kid, the the model that you guys had and and Sebas yeah, and, yeah. and Jared and, and what you guys have been able to do, it makes sense. But the amount of work that it takes to bring all that together is somewhat um it's a lot. I don't think people know like because other clubs have good ideas, you know, Blazers, right? That's a unique thing. Andrew, Andrew, shout out to Andrew, goes and hits up the guys from Men and Blazers podcast and they get their kits and they got the the kind of tuxedo looking FIFA kits. And that's like a cool idea as well. But you guys have taken it to a whole different, like a whole different spot. And that must have been the planning. Like, I guess I'm asking the speed at which things have progressed. The foundation had to have been in place from like all these build like it doesn't it's not just one day you call mpsl and then tomorrow you're like yep we're in the league it's not like one day you call jared and the next day all of a sudden he's like 
Jerry's a guy that's photographed oh, like Alex Ovechkin for those listening. Like he's big time. Dude knows what he's doing. It's not like you called him and then next day it's Jerry's the team official photographer. Like all this stuff. How early did you start putting all these these blocks in place? Yeah, I mean, I think I think the original idea was just, you know, me and Keith chopping and I was like, yeah, like I should just make a team and we should just go and do our thing. And then we kind of just went back and forth on all the ideas. And I I think the, you know, the backbone of, you know, the identity of the club was in place from day one. And when I originally spoke to Jared, um, Jared hit me up and, and we met up and had a conversation. I think really we, we kind of had the same kind of vision and, and really understood what we were going, go, you know, kind of, going for and kind of the same, you know, ideas. And ever since then, we kind of just, just step by step, you know, organically tried to grow it uh, as much as possible. And I mean, like, I, like you said, I mean, we only been around like nine months, something like that. So it, it's, it's good growth. It's fast growth, um, but it's organic. It doesn't feel rushed. So that's, that's the main thing. Yeah, it doesn't feel rushed. I I agree. I had two things that I thought about. The first is when you're speaking to somebody like Jared, who you didn't know Jared before this, right? No. So so how fast did that click? You had to give over some level of control and trust to somebody that you didn't really know. And you might have clicked, but there's gotta be a certain level of trepidation in your own brain, like this is my this is this is what I wanna do, and I'm gonna have this guy because he's been involved since pretty much day one. So you bring him in and there's gotta be some level of like, is this guy for like how much do I trust this guy with doing this, this, and this? And it's not that he's a bad person, it's just he's somebody new and you don't know. And then the second thing that we can get to after, uh, but I don't wanna forget is the future of the club. And I run into this with my own podcast. It's like, all right, I'm 115 episodes in now. What, you know what I mean? Like you hit MPSL was Nissa youth club. Like there's all these ways that you can go. Where is that for you? So go with, let's go with the Jared one first and then we'll go to the other stuff after. Cause I think that'll bring us into other areas of conversation. Yeah. I think um, the relationship with Jared is organic like super organic i think genuinely the first time we met we had a conversation about like what he did and and what i did and um what what his ideas were and what my ideas were and i think we both like i said understood each other from the beginning and like i said it's a really um organic and unique friendship because like i said it's it's grown tremendously and that's like like one of my best friends now and you know somebody who who's going to be around the club for a long time and somebody who believes not only believes in my vision and the club's vision but um but understands it and, and works for it as well so it it's great to have him you know working alongside as as you know a peer and as a friend so um yeah Jared definitely is able to push things to the next level and that's kind of leading into your next point of what's the future. I mean, just taking things um, each way to the next level, right? We want to step up the way that the, the kits look, right? We we obviously did did something great with these kits, but we want to, you know, take it a step further. We, we want to obviously, you know, win NPSL, and then we want to take it even a step further to be to become fully professional. Um, you know, we, we would love to to obviously create that youth that youth uh, program. Um, and ideally a after we get the men's, um, side of things running and, um, running smoothly and, and without any, any problems, I definitely want to tap into the women's side. And that's, that's really the next, um, the next big thing that I'm trying to tap into. What is your, how do you juggle all these things? How, because sometimes you and I talk and you're like, and you'll let me know something that you haven't announced yet. And I sometimes will have three or four things that I know that haven't gone on socials yet and haven't gone on. And I'm sitting there like, fuck, like I got two, two sponsors for us. And that took me not that much, but 
I can imagine in my head multiplying that by a thousand for what you're doing. And I'm, I'm, and I'm like, like, how do you keep track of it all? How do you, because, and, and this, this is meant to be a compliment to you. You've grown so much since the first time I met you that when you, when I saw the post and heard the idea, I was like, Oh, I hope this works. Cause I wanted it to work for you guys. But I also knew that the person that I met at the beginning of COVID would not have been able to do what you've done now. The per the you now is able to handle it. So how did you yeah, feel that, I mean, how did you feel that growth in yourself as you went? Was it a was it more of a, well, I've started and I have to do it now, like a trial by fire? Or or were you like, no, I'm ready for this before you jumped in? No, I mean I definitely think um I definitely think that life life kind of pushes you in certain directions, you know what I'm saying? And um, I think at the moment when we started the club, it was the right moment for 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 what was going on. And I and I knew that it was for the long run. People thought, I think a lot of people thought that it was for um, us to play and move on, you know, but I, I, that was never the goal. You know what I'm saying? From the beginning, the goal was we're going to do this now and we're going to grow it. You know, it was never to, to abandon ship. It was always to, to create this and, and organically grow it. And like I said, hopefully turn it into a fully professional club and really something unique in this country. Seems like it's going that way. It's the, it's the only amateur club I've seen that have been on soccer Bible that have been on, all these other platforms where they run in with stuff and that makes me happy to be a part of it. There's no, um, I don't know. It just, everybody seems in a good mood, even first half of Greenville, right? We don't play well as a team, but there's never, nobody's finger pointing. Nobody's down. Nobody's, um, like people are in a good mood and the and the thing that I find really nice about it is like if I fuck up people just say next one because they know that I know that I fucked up. And it's nice yeah. to not it's nice to not have it's like it's like I was talking to Nick, uh and he says all the best parts about college soccer without any of the the worst meaning like there's no coaches up your up your butt about random stuff, but you get to train at a high level and you play at a high level. And it's kind of then after that, you treat it as adults and you take care of yourself. But the trainings are there and the organization is there and you go to practice and you're taken care of. It's like it's a really nice mix. Yeah, I think I think the great thing is, is that there's obviously, you know, the the coaching structure from from me and from Roger. But I think the great thing is, is that everybody understands um, their role and what they should be doing because everybody's played at that high level. And when somebody gets on somebody else, they know it's not, you know, a personal dig. It's just about the game and about the club and about making, you know, everybody better. Um, and I think, yeah, that's why it's great, obviously, to play with us. And, and yeah, I hope it can stay like that. And to your other point, um, I think that, I think that there's always kind of um I think there's always kind of a, a a room a room for growth and I think that that's kind of just you know the goal is to always just keep growing like like we talk about you know yeah the level of maturity when you talk about people not taking it as a personal dig is a good environment to bring younger players up in one or two at a yeah, time. And I and I think as well to 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 talk about like you you had mentioned about Greenville, about yeah, we was we we had not, not played the way that we had wanted to play. But I think the great thing about the the team is the spirit that, that we have. I don't think anybody ever feels when we're losing a match that we're going to lose the match. It's always a feel of we we're gonna get the next one and then the one after that and the game's gonna be ours. There's never a fear of we're down, the game is over. It's always a fight to the end. It's always a work to the end. And I think 
that's a testament to everybody. That's a testament to, you know, the way that we run the club and the way that the players uh, handle themselves and the coaches handle themselves. But, yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I want to – we'll chat about the club for a little bit more and then we'll get on to City and, and some other fun stuff. But I want to I wanna pick your brain on youth development a little bit. Right now we got two um, younger players training with us, or three, I guess. Obviously, they're going to have good days and bad days, and we've seen it from all from all three of them. What are your thoughts on, like, at some point going to if we get enough going to like a U a U eighteen or U nineteen team that plays ECNL or 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 what are your thoughts like to start to bring through and have it be sustainable long term? Is that kind of like what like what are your thoughts on on that? Because it can be difficult, right? We've got youth clubs in the area, and there's a lot of right. Let's not let's not pretend like politics doesn't exist in U.S. soccer. It does, and we want to kind of stay away from that. I would, um, based on our conversations and just how you and I are as people, right? We want to just play and develop players and help the game. It's, it's a it's a weird thing that you want to help your own team, but just you want to grow the game and you want to help players develop as as players and as people. And we don't need the other nonsense that goes on. So I was yeah. wondering kind of what your thoughts were on that, if you had thought about it before. Um, I think, to... you know, I think we've had, you know, those conversations, um, obviously about, you know, the, 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 the youth program in the future, obviously. Um, and, and to be fair, we're not like um, any other team that is beginning from a youth program and then growing a men's program, right? We're, we're starting kind of the opposite. We're starting, you know, the, the men's program and going to obviously try to make the team younger, um, w which is the goal, and then hopefully um, build, build the youth program down instead of the opposite way. Um, but yeah, definitely looking towards the future and definitely glad to, to already be kind of having, you know, some teenagers training with us and, and really, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully growing themselves and growing the club as well. Yeah. I think we're going to be at a point where we've got, it's going to be, I don't want to use the word exclusive cause it's not entirely what I mean, but I guess more an elite, like we can almost turn it into a a this is where somebody wants to go because we have a pathway to a whether it's Nissa or whatever the case is eventually a path straight up to a first team of somewhere some way without the I'll say bloat of some of the other big clubs with the amount of teams that they have and the amount of the amount of um I don't really know what the right word I'm looking for is but it's going to be a, a place where you kind of – there's clubs that are ground up in terms of take a player, any player, and try to develop the player. And then there's clubs where it's you take a player and then you get them to the next step. And I think I also that's... think I also think that, you know, monetarily things play a factor. You know, that there's youth, youth clubs, obviously, in the area that make, you know – players play and it restricts things and obviously that's the one thing you know that's great about our club and hopefully we can keep it like that is that you know nobody is you know paying for everything we're able to make sure everybody is taken care of and the goal is obviously if we you know when we uh expand the youth program to keep it that way because you know uh, uh the idea of having to to pay to play is kind of ridiculous and it's obviously restrictive and it's um it's what we're trying to get out of the game and definitely like i said the goal for us is i uh, like we've talked about in the past is to create that 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 youth that youth program and start funneling people through and making sure that everybody is given you know that fair opportunity you know with with money not being an uh uh, uh an aspect and with politics not being an aspect so yeah. Fair enough. All right. Speaking of molding teams, City absolutely walloped Madrid today. And it's like I knew it was gonna happen. 
Yeah. So what's strange to me is I want to say one thing I noticed before um, and you obviously give your thoughts. But one thing I noticed is when City signed Manuel Kanji in the summer from Dortmund, I was like, fuck, man, that he's probably our best defender. And what's crazy about that is he left because we didn't want to pay him whatever salary he wanted or whatever. And to City, it's like not nothing, but it's also a drop in the bucket really compared to what to what everybody else is making. And I'm sitting watching him play as a left center back in an basically lopsided 3-5-2 and absolutely just take that side away. All right, I think did did Militao get own goal or did Akanji get credit for it in the end on the header? No, nah, I think I think it was Akanji to be honest. So when he scored that I was like, you know what? When you're getting goals from a center back that you signed for 15 million, that nobody re- like nobody looked at him. I don't know why United didn't look at him. Like he would have been upgraded. Man. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like United didn't look at him. Liverpool didn't look at him. 15 mil for a player that good, and you let City yeah, snap man. him up like that. It's like, come on, man. So I don't know. That's obviously not my only takeaway, but. Watching watching them play, I know Ake has been in team of the season for them. He's he's been really good for you guys all season. But yeah, Kanji, dude, what a player, man! No, I mean obviously we signed him late. I think in the transfer window, August, and yeah, yeah and so um, yeah, I mean that's <laughs> that's fantastic. Obviously, and and I mean I think a lot of people had kind of thought that he wasn't going to be playing that much, but. Yeah, I mean, obviously he's coming and doing extremely well and played well in this massive game today. But I mean, what a game! I, I, I finally, finally we did it. So you still we just got, one, got left. one more, one more left, one more left against Inter. It'll be a good, good match there, a good team. And um, no, I mean, it's good, it's good. Holland couldn't get one today, but you know he's saving it for the final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I 100%. mean, you, you, you get you know two goals from Bernardo Silva today, and um, I mean, you couldn't be happier, right? So I mean, I mean, the main thing is, is uh, I they came out from the beginning, and there was no, it, it was no question what the game was going to be like. I mean, they were pressing, and and yeah, I mean, it was great. I it's exactly what I wanted to see today. <laughs> yeah, the energy, the pressing was really good. The tackles were good. I want to touch on one thing from the first leg, and I don't know. One thing I noticed from the first leg without Militao, when Rudiger played, it was almost like at times Valverde dropped in because you guys dropped into four four two without the ball, and it was almost like Valverde dropped into in the transition when the Bruyne would come off the center backs Valverde was dropping almost into a back five and so then he could follow the Bruyne into midfield without leaving the space in behind and when he followed the Bruyne into midfield it became the 4-3-3 for Madrid and he was very quiet the first game and I didn't notice them do that today yeah I mean it's interesting right because I think everybody kind of thought Rudiger was going to play today because he did so well against Holland and I think that's, you know, kind of what, you know, uh, threw us off in the first match, right? Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, Militao is still a great center back and came in. And I mean, I, I yeah, I think that's a little bit part of it. But I think, to be honest, the, we got our the, tactics spot on today. You guys, you guys did. I think what yeah. did it was De Bruyne went and Gundogan were playing a lot wider and it gave two V ones in um in the wide areas and that was something that was tweaked for sure by Pep. We also were not playing afraid at all. Like in the first yeah. leg I think we were playing a little bit more afraid and a little bit more um we were not asserting ourselves playing our style the whole match. And I think today like I said, from from minute one, even on the turnover, even when we gave the ball away, like press from everybody, constant. You know what I'm saying? Down press, press. I think, um, I think the way City presses with um, Jack Grealish and, and Holland 
uh, you know, pressing the two center backs, especially today, was was fantastic. They they basically won the ball back after them playing it long, damn near every time, or they forced a turnover in the corner with De Bruyne or Gundogan or Bernardo Silva pressing and you know Holland down pressing the opposite side. So it's all it's all interesting. And I mean, like I said, Pep got his tactics spot on today, and he did. Like I said, the the press was fantastic. That's like main takeaway is it was fantastic. Oh, it was nice. And really, 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 we were in control, and like it could have been more. I mean, honestly, should have been. Courtois more. had a hell of a game. Courtois he had did. a hell of a game as well. I mean, and you still scored for it. Yeah, I mean, sheesh. Normally, when but he plays like that, it's like it seems like uh, it'll be a passing of the torch here for Madrid. I think it's time for Kamavinga to play central midfield and be the player he is because what a player that he's going to be and is right now. But that's somebody that's that's fantastic for, for Madrid. I think that it's it's his time now, it's his moment. Yeah, and I think Bellingham's going to end up there next season. Oh, and... Sad enough. Yeah. Sadly. What's interesting to me about – have you you probably not watched much Dortmund, have you? No, so, I don't watch much Bundesliga. So what's interesting to me about Bellingham and – Dortmund, there's the engine on him is crazy, but there's times when he goes to press all the way, like late in the game, and he he'll leave a gap. Like he can't, in my at least this current version of him, he cannot play in a midfield two. And we, when we went on that ten game win streak, we were playing him as basically free free player, and Sally Oschan and Emre Chan were playing in midfield behind him, and that is when he was scoring all the goals and stuff. And then as soon as we went back to like Royce or Brandt as the third center mid, and he had a bit more defensive responsibility, we started leaking goals. And I don't – it's not all on him, right? Guerrero is, doesn't play defense worth a shit. But – so I don't know. It's I don't know how they're going to use him. It's going to be really interesting to me to see if if they keep – like honestly, I mean, if I'm if I'm think them, about if it. I'm them, I play Camavinga and Chuameni, and then I play Valverde and Bellingham, and kind of like a, and then Vinny and Benzema up top. The thing is, right? It's so many people with engines. I don't necessarily see it making, uh, you know, so much of a difference because no, when in, you have Camavinga or Tukamani or Valverde or any of them really behind you. In that it's in that team, it won't. So it'll get it'll get covered. But I'm saying I've watched it happen, and I'm yeah. like, dude, come on! Like we're like we're up. We'll close the game out, bro. Stop running to the goalkeeper. Stay in your spot, and like we'll see the game out, right? We see two games out. We're five points clear of Bayern with two games to go. Instead, we're a point behind. It's like, yeah, I mean that's what makes the good teams from the great. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're right. not wrong. So. What are your thoughts on Inter? Did you watch the game yesterday? I did. I did. I did watch the game. I think, um, I mean, it, it the game, it, it seemed it seemed won from the beginning, if we're being honest. I mean, yeah. after the first leg, I think um, they, they, I mean, to be honest, they got their tactics spot on both, both legs as well. I mean, yeah. playing Dzeko instead of Lukaku from the start was, was fantastic. Another fantastic uh, performance from Latour Martinez. I mean, it's going to be a tough match. It's a Champions League final. It, you never know. It's a one-off match. So, like, I mean, like like we always talk about, at any moment, at any time, anybody could beat anybody, right? So, yeah, I think, um, I think it's our moment, though. I mean, I think it's our moment for the travel here. I agree. I think agree. it's our moment. I'm ready for it. I'm feeling good about it. I think... Um, I think I think the league is virtually won. I think um I think us winning, you know, today makes the FA Cup final even more massive for everybody. When is uh um, when is that? Is that next week? June. No, I think that's the beginning of June, I think. Well, I don't know. Um but I think like I said, I think it makes that game much more massive. I mean, it's already massive FA Cup final Manchester derby, but you know, they don't want to see a city win a treble. 
and we obviously want the treble. So I think um, I think it's going to be all lineups firing, and I think I think it's our time, man. I think I think Holland, I think Holland, uh, is making the difference at these moments. Yeah. Even when he doesn't score goals, he makes a difference. Like his his work rate today is bonkers. Oh, I mean, fantastic. I mean, that's exactly that's exactly what you want. I mean, the great thing that you can see in this city team now is everybody is working for each other. Like you can like really today in the press, you can tell that everybody's clicking. Everybody knows where one another is going to press. And if one person goes here, they know to go here. And it's really like I said, I mean, they were fantastic today. Like it turned like I don't know how many times Madrid turned the ball over and in, in in you know from the goal kick, Carvajal, even Modric today was was seemed off the pace because of just how well we were playing. I mean, also let's give a credit to John Stones, man. What a fast, fantastic player John Stones yeah, yeah. is. Yeah, for sure. I mean, maybe even like wow, what a player. What to go player. from center half into midfield, right back, even sometimes he can do it, he can do it all. To be honest, I mean he plays center mid like he's a proper center mid. So yeah. I mean it's fantastic. The versatility on all of your defenders. When a, lo- a lot of our players, even right, I mean yeah. you think about Gundogan, you think about Bernardo Silva can play. Yeah, I mean, yeah. anywhere on the pitch. So yeah, it's it's really it's really interesting. Um. What are your thoughts on the system matchup? When I look at the way system interplays, they play a straight, right? It's not, it's It's not more traditional, right? It's a more traditional three, five, two. And you look at, and you look at the three center halves that they play and the wing backs that they play. It's not where it's the three, you got the three and then the, like the one center back is in midfield. And then the other, like you don't have like the wide players are not, the wide players are Gosens and Dumfries, who are just workhorses. Then you got in the in midfield Brozovic, like he's he's a player, and then Barella is also he's I really mean, good. I you, think he's fantastic, to be honest. Yeah, and then up top, Jekyll. We'll see who they go with. We'll see if they go with Jekyll or Lukaku. With uh, either way, they're both Martinez. handfuls. They're both handfuls either way. If I was if I was him, I would just do what he did in the. In the semifinal, what got them there? Like you, you got Lukaku coming off the bench, sixty minutes running at you with Martinez, right? It's not like that. That puts you in. If I was Pep, I wouldn't change anything other than maybe Stones just start slightly deeper, because yeah, you don't I wouldn't really change want anything. I I wouldn't either, but he might. In my head, the matchups for. Instead of three v one, you're looking at three v two in the back with bodies, right? Benzema, you guys dealt with Benzema pretty well. He didn't really do anything, but Jeko is what six five, Lukaku yeah, is six three in a tank. Like it's, it's different. Yeah. It's different. They can lump it up to them, and he can hold it off and bring the wing backs into play. It's like it's slightly different. And you got like the personnel is different because the runners are gonna come late. Like v- Vinny is already on Walker versus lump it into Jekko and have Gosens flying at you. And if Bernardo Silva or whoever doesn't come back, like then you kind of, you, it should be cause interesting problems. to see if we, if we tweak, um, I mean, really, if we tweak anything, I, I, I mean, it's way different than playing Madrid. Obviously it, it's, it's much more, I, I, like I said, I mean, it's going to be a much more traditional t- way that they're playing, right? It's not going to be, you know, Vinny super high, Benzema dropping in, you know, and, and people are able to deal with it that way. It's going to be, like I said, much more traditional center backs having to actually defend, you know, a more tr- traditional way a, a, a three five two is played. So it'll be interesting. I mean, I think I think Latao Martinez is is dangerous off the second ball. Um, I, I I think I think he's in form, but I think yeah, I still I'm confident, man. I think yeah, I think that be. um, I think that I think that that's our best lineup the way we're playing right now. I don't think that um, obviously you know Ake being injured is tough. I don't know, um, but but I think. 
yeah, right now this is our best lineup. I mean, people are talking about maybe having Mares come in, and I'm like, no, nah, I don't. It's it's not his moment right now. You know what I'm saying? It's right now this this is this is our best team. Work rate, possession, the way that we need to play in these moments. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I, like I said, I was happy the way we handled them today. I mean, it, it's just one more match. That's all I can yeah. hope for. I think you guys should be if you guys play anywhere close to how you played today, you guys should be good. Um, knock, knock on wood. Yeah, it's those Italian teams though. They do weird things in finals, man. It's like it's similar to Madrid a little bit, and like where it's like you don't really know how they got there, and then all of a sudden they they up one zero off a corner, and they just park in the bus, and you're like, fuck. Yeah. They know how to win games. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. I think. What? I think we've had our learning curves, you know. I think yeah, we've yeah. had our learning curves, and I think um, we got over the hurdle that I think was was the roadblock, and I think now it's our time. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the season as a whole, Arsenal specifically? Do you think they bottled it, or do you think they kind of ended up where they should have been, or thoughts on Arteta, kind of how how that team is looking. I think a lot of people are interested in them after the all or nothing came out and they saw Arteta drawing fucking light bulbs on the whiteboard in the locker room and shit. I mean, everybody everybody has an opinion, right? On on I'll start with the all or nothing thing. It's everybody has an opinion on what they see and whatever. But they don't really know um the way that that a coach's relationship with his players and the way that they're bought in for him and nobody else. So I think Arteta is, is, is the one, you know what I'm saying? Let's uh, not get that twisted anywhere there. I think the way that he's able to communicate with his players, um, especially them being a young squad and like they They seem 100% completely bought into to him and the way probably he's able to communicate with them is, is, the, the the right thing I think that they're a great team I think I mean yeah you always have to look at it like they bottled it right because they should have won the league they had command of the league and and they didn't but at, at the end of the day they're where they belong they did bottle it but they are where they belong at the end of the day sustainability is 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 what it takes to win the league and you're not going to do it uh your first run right like this is their first run where they 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 had the chance I think um I think next year it, if um if they don't finish first or second, I think then we can start talking about about failure, you know. So mm. I wouldn't even go that far in my head, right? Liverpool, Liverpool's gonna strengthen, right? They've got their they got their front three sorted. If Van Dyke just takes one tiny step back to right, he doesn't gotta go be a Ballon d'Or candidate. But we just need to we just need I'm not a Liverpool fan, so I'm obviously gonna be biased here, but we just need to see a little bit less whiny Liverpool and they may go back to being better. Well, that's what I'm saying. They bring in McAllister and another midfielder or something, Caicedo, whoever, all of a sudden you're looking at them back up fighting for top four. United will have a full preseason with Ten Hag, another transfer window with Ten Hag. They'll be up fighting for top four. You guys obviously will still be there. Arsenal, probably what another, another striker, another center midfielder, another center back. They're up there again. And then you're looking at okay, well, what happens to Harry Kane? Does he go to United? Because then Spurs. I don't think out. he leaves. I don't think he leaves. If we're being honest, I think. Um, I mean, it's difficult, right, with Harry Kane. Now we get on that topic. I mean, where's um, where's he going? Because I don't think that there's anybody who who would shell out the kind of money that he's worth um, for somebody his age. And I think that that starts <clears throat> to play a factor. And I think um, there may be a factor in his head that that's playing out in terms of like, I don't think he thinks he can go anywhere to that's going to be, you know, feasible for the money he wants to make. So I think that he's almost going to settle into to Spurs, you know, greatest player yeah. ever, or, 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 you know, I, it'll, it'll be interesting to see that. That's all I know. Yeah, and then you got Chelsea, right? Lukaku's coming back off loan, and you look at or he won't come back. He shouldn't well, come back. They should, should let him stay. He shouldn't, right? They should do that. But as of now, he's coming back. Yeah, and I think Pochettino's coming in, and so now you're looking at 
six. We'll 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 not count Spurs, but we'll count. We'll say Brighton. Actually, no, because Benton Core will be back. So you've got seven, like six, seven clubs that you're looking at that I think you guys should should finish first again. You guys have the deepest squad. And then after that, like, if Arsenal finish third on 80 points, I don't think that's a failure, right? Like, if you guys win the league on 95, and then somebody will say Liverpool gets 82 and Arsenal finish third on 80. Like, that's that to me is not failure even though i think it has to be closer if it's um i i think that i don't know man i think that it's difficult right because they were so close this year again right like it's it's almost yeah it's tough to say that it would be a failure but it's almost tough to say that it wouldn't be right because They were so close to touching it this year, right? You know what I'm saying? They had they had one hand on it, so it, it's almost like their fans are going to expect it again. So and, and if they, if they don't... make top four again, though, and they're competitive, I would say some level of consistency is almost good, right? Like if we look at the Bundesliga right now, I'm going to view if we don't win the the title, which we probably won't, I'm going to view it as a failure because we dropped we had three games against bottom three teams that we got two points out of from winning positions, right? To me, failure. We win two of those games. We're five points clear with two games to go. Yeah. And, and, and it's not even like it's a two zero lead in the 89th minute. We lose three, two. It's a two zero lead and a man up in the 35th minute. And we tie three, three. It's like, it's like games like that. It's like that to me is bottling it. But on the whole, if I look at the season as a whole, what do you think would put you over that hurdle though? In terms of what to win the league, yeah. What, well, like, we would need Bayern to fuck up like they have been. So I'm sitting here like Bayern. Bayern is fucked up because they're such a they're such a level ahead of everybody else. I almost look at you guys in the same in the same way. Like Arsenal was only in there because you guys fucked up at the beginning of the season. It wasn't. It wasn't so. like. Yeah. So it was like so. Next season, let's just say you guys fuck up a little bit less, and you're sitting at. 35 games and you're already on 90 points and you're kind of, and Arsenal's on 79, 80, 81 points with three games to go. League's already gone, but they get to 84, 85 points. Like, and any era outside of the Pep City era, you're looking at title challenger for sure. For sure. But you guys have been running away with it all the time. Not to say that it's turning into the Bundesliga because I think two, three, four, five in the Prem are better than the Bundesliga for sure. But I think City are, I think you guys are that good. I I think that we're, I think that we're built to last too. I think that I I definitely agree with what you're saying. Um, I think some of what we're saying will be determined based off how Arsenal does in the Champions League. Um, Yes. Right, because if they do well enough in the Champions League for their fans, then maybe their fans won't care as much if they're not as close to the title, right? Um, because obviously, you know, Arsenal being a historic club, their fans crave to be in Champions mm-hmm. League. Um, so I think that plays a factor. I think, again, it, it, to your point, Man City is is built to last, right? And And I think there's a lot of reasons for that. I mean, recruitment... It Huge. has been fantastic, right? I mean, all top clubs have money nowadays. I mean, let's not get it twisted here and say like Man City is the only club with money. Every club has money here. Recruitment, top to bottom. You can tell just clear. by the pro- you know the what profile. I'm saying? You can tell just by the profile of defender. Ake, yeah. Stones, Akanji, Ruben Diaz, a little bit different, but you like the profile of defender. They're all mobile center backs you guys can play with four center backs is four yeah. or five center backs is yeah. bonkers and it's like it's tough right because just at the beginning of the season i think we were talking about Cancelo being still one of our best players you know what i'm saying and i think that immediately pep made the choice of having to be a little bit more stable and ultimately, Cancelo wanting to leave ultimately led us in the right direction, if we're being fair. Yeah. Um, because, you know, we were playing, you know, the kid, Rico Lewis, in central midfield. 
And he was obviously doing well in terms of playing like Cancelo, but it wasn't enough where we could stay like that. And him wanting to leave led Ake into playing that position and ended up leading us in exactly the way we needed to play. You know, we stopped kind of having those, you know, you know, outside backs tucked centrally and you more just have central center back basically stepping in as a, as a, you know, as a central, as a second, you know, defensive midfielder. So it, it's all interesting to see that the way that goes. But like you said, I mean, I, I mean, it, it's it's structure of club, right? I mean, right now at this moment, we're we're, you know, one of the best structured clubs in the world, if not the best. So I'm, you know, I'm happy to be a fan in these moments. Obviously, it, it's it's great. I'm very happy. Hopefully, we can keep sustaining like that. And obviously. You know, to kind of, you know, talk about Virginia Dream again is just like it. It it's something that you look at as like, oh, uh, me being owner of Virginia Dream is something you look at Man City's model and the way they've grown and the way that they've grown their academy into into being one of the best in the world and not just from a, a footballing perspective, but the way that, um, it is in the community and the way that they're growing the community in a positive way. And now that, um, you know, more money is kind of being invested into that women's game, it, it's kind of, it, it's coming full circle. And that's like Man City is doing great things. And it's definitely a club that I'm kind of looking at as like structurally, like this is, you know, the way they, the way they do things is the right way in these moments, you know? So I, I think... I think it'll be interesting to bring it back, like you said, next year in the Prem. I think it'll be interesting. I think, um, I mean, I think if we won again, it may be, it's, it's pretty unprecedented. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's, that's, that'd be unreal. <laughs> what are you looking at for transfer targets? Because in my head, I don't really know what you, it's kind of like what Pep wants. Like, wing, like wingers, you guys are good. Attacking midfielders, you guys are good. Probably somebody to replace Gund- Gundogan, assuming he leaves. And I then... mean, it's if it's all going to depend, right, on on what happens with Gundo, on what happens with Bernardo Silva. Um, I definitely think we still need to bring in um, a proper a proper right back. Kyle Walker is kind of aging, even though he's fantastic. Don't get it twisted. Kyle he Walker is today, fantastic. Dude. Kyle Walker is hands down one of the best defenders in the world. Let's never get that twisted. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think an outside back, and I think it, it's going to depend on on contractually kind of uh, what happens and what who leaves and and things like that. But I mean, again, I think our in our last two transfer markets, I mean, we made um, fantastic moves. <laughs> like we were talking about a kanji again for for so little money, right? I mean, a kanji and Alvarez, two great signings. I, I mean, I mean. Alvarez, what a what a player, right? And again, for so for for basically nothing, right? Like it's you you sub in you sub in Julian Alvarez for Holland, and it's it's almost like it's just a different style of play. And you know what I'm saying? It's 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 really fantastic to watch. I mean, Julian Alvarez, like almost anywhere else in the world, would start. Like, yeah, a fantastic player, like. I found him on Football Manager last year. Signed him for <laughs> signed him for cheap for Dortmund. We we won the Champions League, man. We can all dream. What a player. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm still dreaming, man. I'm still yeah. dreaming. It hasn't happened yet. I mean, we can't all be like Madrid, but no. we can we can hope we can hope one day. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, you guys, fingers crossed, man. I honestly, as for the neutral, I hope for a good game, right? I. I know people say sometimes watching Madrid is boring or not Madrid watching city is boring, but if I just, I just want a good game, right? Like I know you'll be very happy if they run away and go win five zero, but it's and like, I don't see that happening. If we're being frank, like I, I yeah. see it being a, I see it being a close match. I mean, it's like we are talking about with the Italian teams and finals and the way that they defend and their heart. And, you know, I mean, it, again, I think, I think they'll tactically get it right against us, and I think we'll tactically get it right against them. So I think, I think it'll be a good match. I think, um, 
I mean, like you said, for the neutral, everybody wants to see a, a thriller, but I don't I'm even hoping... care if it's a thriller. I just want like <laughs> I, I texted you this the other uh, when I texted you this the other day, like the first game, the tactics were crazy and we were sitting there like, Oh my God, I can't believe he pulled that guy this way. And he did that guy that way. And I was like, this is what people who don't know soccer hate about soccer. They're like this game is so yeah. boring. And we're sitting there like, Oh my God, Valverde moved two steps over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. I, as long as is that I'm good. If inner park the bus, I'm going to be, I'm gonna be throwing bottles at the TV. These, of course, because TST is coming, and <laughs> I need to I need to be ready for for that. But um, coming yeah, soon. Yeah, let's touch on that before we before we wrap up. So, um, TST is coming up. For those listening, it's a seven v seven tournament um, in Cary, North Carolina, in two weeks. It is run by the same people that are doing the three on three basketball tournament. We, in our group, we have a team from Israel, a team from Canada, a team from Mexico. Um, yeah, dude, I'm excited, man. First, I appreciate the opportunity to let them to go down there with you guys, let alone play. Like that's going to be crazy. But two, man, I'm, it's just, well, do we even, I don't even know what to expect. I'm just along for the ride. Yeah, man. man I mean, I think, um, I think, and nobody really knows what to expect, right? I think it's the first kind of thing of its kind. Um, so I think it's really interesting because, yeah, like I said, like you said, I mean, I don't think anybody really knows what to expect because to get this kind of mix of people, you know, with um, teams like us, teams like, you know, Dortmund, like we talked about, like Wrexham, like um, West Ham you know, is there, hashtag yeah, West United. Ham. Hashtag United Women's National Team. You know, you got Belita, you know, a team based of a lot of, you know, top level indoor guys. I mean, it's going to be really exciting. Um, and it's going to be really interesting again, because I don't think, I don't think people realize that the way that this game will really kind of level um, the playing field. And I think that, you know, us kind of playing together all the time and having chemistry and having fitness and, all those things, I think that'll play um, kind of a, a major factor in, in certain games. And I think um, I think we have a real chance to get out of our group. You know what I'm saying? I think um, I think it's going to be super competitive. But I think um, I, I think definitely we we have a good chance of getting out of our group. I think it'll be I think it'll be a battle. But I think you know I think we're ready for the challenge. I mean, it it, it, it it's going to be. Um, yeah, it's gonna be one of a kind. It's gonna be super. Um, it's gonna be super dope to be a part of. Super dope to be a part of the first one and kind of experience it all. And you know, a lot of our guys kind of experiencing together. I think it'll be. Um, yeah, I think it'll be really, really good and and really interesting and lots of great content and and everything will be created out of it. And hopefully, we can get a million dollars. I mean, we working hard. We're we're uh, yeah, fingers crossed. We're working hard and. Um, I mean, like I said, I think I think the playing field is more level than the average person would expect, and um, yeah, it'll be interesting to kind of kind of see how it all plays out. Cause yeah, I think one thing you never know be you never know who's going to show up too. You know, yeah. So. I think one thing that'll be interesting is the the Elam ending, right? You can't just go waste time at the end. You got to go win the game, and that's going to be something that as everyone who's going has played for years and years and years and is used to like, okay, we're up two zero. We're going to see the game out. It's like, Nope, you still got to go get, you still got to go win the game. That's going to be, that's going to be a bit strange. I think for, for some people, but. Because think about like in a normal match, right. I think about how dangerous being up two one is, you know what I'm saying? And like you're up two one going into the Elam ending and the other team gets a goal and it's now two, two. I mean, yeah. the other team has now the complete advantage, right? So, it, it like you said, it's going to be a complete, you know, 360, 180 mind, you know, mindset shift that people are going to have to do. And like we were talking about in training with the no offsides, I mean, obviously us, we're a little bit used to it from playing, you know, at the indoor, at the indoor level. Mm -hmm. um, but I think people that have never played um, – Obviously, everybody has played small side at 7v7 in training with no offsides, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're not, you know, used to somebody just, you know, 
playing in behind you for a layoff. It, it, it's going to be, it's going to be an adjustment period. And I mean, I keep saying it, but all the rules and the way that it is, I think it's going to be a much more level playing field than, than people expect. And I think that there's going to be a lot of, um, I think there's going to be a lot of shockers to be fair. And man, tickets are selling out. So if you're trying to support Virginia dream, yeah. go cop that junk. Cause they, they, they move. And I think, um, I think it's going to be a lot of, I think it's going to be a lot of people there. I think it's going to be, um, yeah, I think it's going to be a super great atmosphere. Yeah. I think there's a good number of us going that will are just going to soak. I mean, everybody's just going to soak it in, but there's some of us that like some, some people on the team that have like been there, played in front of crowds, et cetera. That's not going to phase, phase them. There's definitely some of us that I think, like I told you, I had to stop checking the website because people kept that like Cesc mm-hmm. Fabregas is like, oh yeah, Fabregas is playing. That's cool. Um, but it's good, man. It's good. It'll be a good experience for sure. Yeah, it'll be a good, good group man. going. Soak it all in. Like, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, it'll be like like it'll be a great atmosphere. You know, I think just the environment of all those teams being in one place. It'll be yeah, super unique and super you know um super exciting yeah all right um i think this is a good spot to end it where can tell the people all the socials virginia dream website instagram buying tickets buying jerseys etc where's all that yeah stuff at? yeah you can um virginia dream you can catch us on instagram twitter tiktok at virginia dream fc um, you can catch our website where you can get our uh, home game tickets and jerseys and all that good stuff at virginiadreamfc.com. And yeah, hopefully everybody out here watching can make it out to a game this season and support support us. Yes, sir. All right, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks all for having me, brother. For sure. All the links in the description. Peace.